Welcome back to our show, Table Talk Truth, with your hosts, Papa C and Mama C. How are you doing, Mama? Hey, hey, I'm doing great. As always, it's a new day, so I feel blessed. Great, Mama. Great. Well, Mike Bickle confesses to inappropriate behavior over 20 years ago. Mama, Mike Bickle finally admitted that he did something wrong. I see. So he recently came out with this. We did a video just a few days ago about Mike Bickle and the scandal that's going on at IHOP KC. And Mike Bickle, we were waiting for him to say something about this whole situation. And he finally put out a written statement, Mama. Yes, he did. So we want to read to the audience some of the things that he said. We will read from this article from the Christian Post where he confesses, somewhat confesses, Mama, to inappropriate behavior. Mm -hmm. So let's read a couple of things from this article. He said, with a very heavy heart, I want to express how deeply grieved I am that my past sins have led to so much pain, confusion, and division in the body of Christ in this hour. I sadly admit that 20 plus years ago, I sinned by engaging in inappropriate behaviors. My moral failures were real. Mama, what stood out to me in his confession, so-called confession, is when he said he sinned by engaging in inappropriate behavior. Hmm. What is that inappropriate behavior, Mama? Well, I, I don't know because it was not stated. It wasn't. That sounds very vague, right? Pretty much it's like... Whatever y'all think, whatever you all think about it, I mean, just form your own judgment. Sounds like lawyer speak, mama. Hmm. It's very ambiguous, meaning just what you said, mama, which is so correct that the listener, they can apply or they can imply that whatever it means, that's what I'll... I will say this inappropriate behavior means. Hmm. I guess so, Papa C. Because I'm still trying to wrap it around my head and figure out, okay, what is the inappropriate behavior? But, I mean... He goes a little bit further, Mama, in his statement. He said, I am not admitting to... Now, this is important, Mama. He goes gives a little bit more detail. He says, I am not admitting to the more intense sexual activities that some are suggesting. Hmm. Intense sexual activities. So are you admitting that you are engaged in sexual activities? They just, they were not intense. Well, pretty much he is because they did say uh, sexual immorality mm. that the allegations about the sexual immorality that was made against them it says that some of it was credible was credible mm -hmm. so he actually is admitting to some form of sexual immorality he's just not stating what type of sexual immorality and leaving it to the people to form their own judgments mm -hmm. So, Papa, see, he said that he's not admitting to the more sexual, well, to the more intense sexual activities that the women are suggesting. So, my, my thing is, let's say if that's the truth, does it really matter? Mm. Isn't sexual immorality sexual immorality? Absolutely. Isn't sin sin? Absolutely. 
where is it in scripture where it ever tells us that this thing, this sin is lower than this sin. Sin is sin. So whether he's admitting to it or not, the point is there was still sexual immorality. Mama, I said this on the last video and his statement is confirming what I said. He's pulling a Bill Clinton. Hmm. Bill Clinton said everyone knows that he had sex with his intern, but he said because they didn't have full blown sex that that wasn't considered sex. Mm -hmm. And that's what Mike Bickle is doing. He's saying, yes, we had sex, but what's your definition of sex? That sounds to me like manipulation and like somebody may have guided him. Lawyers. Well, yes, guided him while he was writing his confession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that appears to be a pattern for people who are in leadership position, who get exposed to where I'm going to admit, but not completely, mm -hmm. not fully. Only to the point to where it doesn't make me appear too bad. Mama, our audience, they may feel like, why he's confessing? Why don't we just forgive him? Why don't we just move on? We've heard people say something like that. The point is, and I don't think that a lot of people don't understand, Mama, is that this is about accountability. We can be forgiven. Yes, we understand that. Yes, man is fallible. Yes, yes. man does sin. We completely understand all of that, Mama. Mm -hmm. But the point that we're saying is that it's about accountability. And Mike Bickle, he's dancing all around the issue. Just admit what happened. Don't dance. You're a minister. You're not a lawyer. Don't dance around the issue. Just admit it. Fully. Fully. Fully confess. And then people can move on. And in fact, he can step down from ministry, really. Mm -hmm. I agree, Papa C, because the thing is, whenever leadership, people in leadership, ministers do not confess completely, it leaves room open for speculation. People will speculate. People, because people will be trying to understand what has happened. And you know what, Papa C, I've seen comments such as, but what about the woman? It takes two. It takes two. Hold your thought, Mom. I know where you're going with this. In okay. fact, let's read a little, well, let's lead, read a couple of lines from this article where we can touch on that. It okay. says, Bickle's confession comes after a woman, speaking of the woman, Mama, okay. identified as Jane Doe by the Roy's report alleged that for approximately three years from 1996 to 1999, Bickle paid for her apartment, gave her a key to his office, and engaged in every sexual act with her except copulation. Copulation means sexual intercourse. So what's your definition of sex? That's what Mike Bickle's saying. Hmm. Wow. She said the IHOP KC founder wooed her with scripture when she was just 19 and he was 42 then made her a kept woman for several years as he established his now popular ministry wow so are we going to go back to why don't we hold her accountable let's remember what ages they gave us Jane Doe was 19 years old. Basically a child, mama. Basically a child. Mike Bickle was 42 years old. A very mature man. Hmm. So she was the age of someone that could be Mike Bickle's daughter. Many people in their 40s have children around 19, 20, 21, 22, around those ages. Many of our audience, I'm sure they have kids that are older than 19 years old. And some 
may be in their 40s. I'm talking about the people in our audience. They may be in their 40s. It also could relate because they looking back like, I have children that age. That is a big jump. It's a big difference. And it does matter because in your 40s, you have lived some life. You have experienced a lot. You have gone through different situations in life where you have learned and have matured more than a 19 year old child could ever do at 19. So it's a big difference. Not only that, Mike Bickle is and was at the time in leadership. He was a pastor. And you know what bothers me at times, Papa C? Hmm. When we have people who claim to be believers and love the most high God and they compare ministers to the average ordinary citizen who are considered to be the flock, who are considered to be the children of God. Yes, mama. And they compare them to ministers and say, but what about their judgment? Why aren't we holding them accountable? Well, Jane Doe is going to be held accountable if she has not been held accountable already for what she has done. It does not excuse anyone. But this is not the point here. She was vulnerable. She was young. She was immature. So we cannot neglect that fact and act like that was not the case. So we cannot compare her to, to the minister, Mike Bickle, who knew better. Mm -hmm. And I've heard about many men, we've heard comments like many men, how they're vulnerable to sexual sins. That's, that's, that is, that's true. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, if that is the case and all, you know, everybody believes that, everybody knows that, then why not let the wives deal with the women? Why not let the ministers who are males, who are men, deal with the men? Why are we allowing these men who deal with sexual temptation to keep dealing directly with these women? Mama, I could not have said it better. They are people who make these types of comments. They are victim blaming. And we talked about that in the last video. They are blaming a 19 year old child saying that she should be held accountable, should be held on the same level as Mike Bickle. When, like you said, mama, he was a pastor at that time when he manipulated this child, this young woman. Mm -hmm. And so they're not, they are not on the same level. He was much more mature. She was much more younger, much more vulnerable. And he was, big, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and he was much more experienced. Absolutely. We can't forget that. He was way more experienced. Mike Bickle have a wife. At the time, he had a wife. Mm -hmm. At the time, he had a family. At the time, he had a ministry. At the which... time, he had a ministry. This is a 19-year-old who is green, mm -hmm. who is coming in and who knows what she's been through. Who knows what her childhood was like? Mm -hmm. Who knows if she had any type of traumas? We don't know anything about her. To, so to form a judgment and say, why aren't we blaming her? Now, you give us a woman who is Mike Bickle's age, who is mature as well, and who knows better. Okay, I get that. But that still does not neglect the fact that Mike Bickle is a pastor, was a pastor, is in leadership, 
was in leadership. And that's just what it is. Leaders are held to higher standards, period. It's no comparison, mama, none. Mama, those that blame the victim, that's like saying the woman who got raped because she had on a certain type of dress, mm -hmm. she deserved to get raped. And we've heard that before. That's Everybody knows that saying. She shouldn't have been dressed that way. She deserved it. She deserved it. That's not true. That's not fair. It is not fair. It is not fair. Let's continue reading this article, Mama. It says the IHOP KC leaders, and we're just jumping all over this article, uh, pointing out the things that are important to you, our viewers. Uh, we'll put the link to this article in the description. But it says the IHOP KC leaders also noted that they identified five of some eight women who the complaint group alleges are Bickle's victims and found the evidence thin. Mama, we were saying this on our other video that the IHOP KC leadership, they uh, acknowledged the victims at first when this all came out. Now they're saying that, you know what? The evidence is thin. Now we only, there's only one woman that we believe has some truth to it or that we should really look into. And that's the Jane Doe. So as we can see, like you said, mama, they're not holding him accountable. They're dismissing these other women. They're dismissing the victims. Hmm. It says three of the alleged victims called the allegations lies. So the, the victims are calling the church lies for calling them liars. Hmm. One of the alleged victims refused to communicate with the attorneys for the ministry. And now what IHOP KC has done, Mama, is hire a lawyer firm to deal with the victims. Why? As a minister, if you are innocent and if you have confessed to everything you have done, why do you need an attorney? to investigate anything. Don't you just have to tell the truth? Don't you just have to confess? Mama, that's what we're saying. That's the purpose of this video. Mike Bickle and the IHOP KC family, church, whatever you want to call them, they are dancing around this whole issue. When they can put all of this to rest, just admit what, what was done wrong and move forward. Why do you need attorneys involved why do you need all of these things? Why do you need to speak and lawyers speak to mask what you've done? Why, mama? We've seen multiple situations like this. When people were guilty about something. And the reason why we can speak that way is because Mike Bickle, he admitted to allegations of sexual immorality. So obviously he is guilty. So this is why we're speaking this way. And if he did that at the time and he was dealing with sexual immorality at that time, what, what convince, what can, I mean, what convinces us that he's not capable of repeating it with other women? Because that is the spirit he was operating in. And when you are operating in that type of spirit, you are being influenced by the devil, the adversary. So you are more than capable of repeating it multiple times. With other women. With other women. And we cannot neglect the fact that these allegations he is saying was over 20 years ago. 20 years ago? So what about all of the newcomers who have came to Mike Bickle's church and who still is you know, at this time who have, who came to his church like recently without knowing about these allegations? without knowing about what he did. That is not helping them to form a healthy 
judgment perception, and right. perception of who they they are saying is their minister and who they have possibly given tons of tithes to, mm -hmm. tons of their money to. And Mike Bickle used a lot of his congregation money to fund, what's her name? Well, Jane, Jane Doe, Doe, to fund her lifestyle. We talked about that in the other video, Mama, that he paid for her apartment, which they acknowledge in this article. He, she was a kept woman for three years. If our audience doesn't know, a kept woman is someone that's put away and is supported by the man so that he can have his shenanigans with her. So he'll pay her rent. He'll pay her car. He'll pay all of her bills so that she can be silent and do what he needs her to do to fulfill his sexual desires. So she was a kept woman, mama. And we can most assuredly conclude that he used the church's money to keep this woman kept, to pay her bills, to pay her apartment, to pay for all these things. We can conclude that's probably what he did. So it's just not a private deal. In fact, I want to read that. He says, this is further down in the article. He says, some may wonder why I am just now making a public statement 20 plus years later. It is because I, it is because I was recently confronted about things I said or did 20 plus years ago. Things I believe were dealt with under the blood of Jesus since this was now since this has now become public i want to repent publicly bickle continue that's exactly what i was just talking about over 20 years ago and you said you're only repenting because it has become public so again what about all of your newcomers who did not know and who have trusted you with their money, with their time, as their leader, and they did not know this about you. What about them? And if he did that 20 years ago, Papa, see, we got to go to scripture about this. What does the scripture say? about a leader and how he should conduct himself, who the leader should be. What does scripture say about that, mama? First Timothy three, starting at verse one, it says the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore an overseer must be above reproach. The, above reproach above reproach the husband of one wife sober-minded self-controlled respectable hospital or hospitable able to teach not a drunkard not violent but gentle not quarrelsome not a lover of money. Hmm. Mama, not a lover of money. Mm -hmm. I just talked about how he supported Jane Doe with the ministry's money. Hmm. Money that, even if it didn't come out of the church money specifically, doesn't the church pay him? Yes. So we can say that the church still funded it, this, whether it came, up, came out of his pocket or the church's pocket. Again, and we will continue to repeat this because this is a known fact. The churches today, many of the modern churches today are businesses, period. This is not our words. This is the truth. They are businesses and they run their churches by the congregation's tithes. And these are the types of things that they do with the money. Period. That's just what it is. 
And we said this too, before you continue with that scripture, we said this on our other video. He controlled this young woman and her husband later when she got married by having a ministry under, supporting their ministry under his church's umbrella. When he said, if you don't, if you come out with this information, I will stop supporting your ministry financially. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like a love of money, right? Hmm. It sounds like it and because I'm going to, I'm going to use money to, to still you. try to get my way. So I'm going to finish the scripture prophecy. It says. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may be, become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders. So that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. He must be well thought of by outsiders. Mama, I find that so interesting that the scripture says that because Mike Bickle admits in his statement that he's hurt his church. He's hurt his ministry. He's hurt the body of Christ, as he says by his actions what the scripture said they the leaders are supposed to be thought well of by outsiders by outsiders so you're making everyone look bad so automatically that disqualifies you from being a leader and we seen he said that he's going to step down but he did not say completely he said he's going to step down but he still possibly saying he may he come may back and the truth is it's a big possibility that he will return because this is the pattern of most ministers who get caught up in these types of uh, sexual immorality they always return they come back and start preaching like nothing ever happened but my question to all of you who are listening is to Please, if you can find it, educate us and put it in the comments where you can find a pastor a in disciple. the scriptures, a, a, a disciple, apostle. A, a, an apostle, the examples that they give in the scriptures, not King David, because King David was a king. He was not a minister. He looked to prophets. Prophets spoke. Who was who was me? Well, who was me? Um, Nathan. Who was Nathan? Prophet Nathan. Prophet Nathan was a prophet. He looked to prophets. Prophets were at that time the most high God's ministers. So somebody was a minister over David. Mm -hmm. So to keep comparing David, who was a man after the most high God's heart, to a, a to a leader today, a minister today. We're comparing apples to oranges, mama. They don't even compare. And we all know that David still had to deal with the consequences of his actions. That's what we're saying, mama. He And this is what we're talking about. It's too many times we hear when there's victims that come out and there is some type of sexual immorality, some type of sexual abuse in these churches where we hear touch not God's anointing. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. Washed by the blood of Jesus. Forgive, have mercy on these ministers. But what about the victims? What about these victims? And we're not saying don't forgive. We're not saying don't pray. We're saying at the end of the day, hold these leaders accountable. accountable. Because this is the very reason why leaders do those very things that Mike Bickle has done. It is because many people come, the congregation come, the people come and say, 
He's just a man just like us. He falls just like us. We have to forgive him. Okay, that is true. But if he gets to the point to where he has fallen, fallen, he has to step down. Yes. Let somebody else take over. Yes. You still worrying about whether you're going to come back or not? We I have to hold them accountable. It has nothing to do with we not having mercy. Because we know at the end of the day, it's between him and the most high God. But he also, we can't neglect the fact that the word tells us how to judge these leaders, these people in position. And how also that the devil will have ministers that will be ministers of, that will be, that will come as ministers of light, mm -hmm. but will be ministers of Satan. Do you actually think, let's think about this prophecy. I just got to ask these questions, this question, you know, do you actually think I'm talking about our listeners, those who I'm not talking about those who understand what we're talking about. I'm talking about those who contend against holding leaders accountable. Do you actually think that every single minister is a minister of the most high? Nope. Does the word teach that every single minister you see, every single minister that you hear about is a minister of the most high God? Mama, the scriptures say that these ministers will be wolves in sheep's clothing. clothing. It, it, it tells us that. And it, tell, it warns us to look out for false prophets. A lot of these ministers today are false prophets this is not all we're not talking about all but we will know them by their fruit this is how the word tells us to judge them many of these ministers are not sent by the most high god it doesn't matter if they call themselves a pastor it doesn't matter if they have a flock under them it doesn't matter if they have people in their churches who who they consider to be their helpers we have to judge them by their fruit. Look at their finances. Many people don't even go that deep to actually see how worldly some of these ministers are. How much money they have in this world, how they have how they focus more on making money and how much money they getting in their churches over the flock of the most high God, over preaching repentance over preaching turning back to God many of these these ministers don't even preach repentance they don't teach against sin they don't teach against sin we have to think about this and our job here on table talk truth is to enlighten people and to call this out to call this out because we are more concerned about the people than we are about people in leadership. Because many people in leadership, and it's not all, we know that. But we are living in the last days. Many people will be wolves in sheep's clothing. And our motivation is to help those who are being led by these false prophets to make sure that they practice discernment. And that they use good judgment to be able to distinguish if these ministers are sent by God or not. And mama, how they can do that is by getting inside the word for themselves and see, does this pastor, does my minister preach according to the word? And if they really do that, mama, they will see that it's only a handful that actually a teach according to the scriptures absolutely right papa c and our job is not to draw people to us and to tell them to worship their pastors it is only our job to tell people to worship the most high god this is what we supposed to be doing as believers it's not about making men more putting them in a position more than we put God 
in, in the position. Only God should be the head of our lives. We should be worshiping him. And yes, we should understand that yes, man can fall. But if they're leading me or if they are in leadership and they fall, I will not follow. And I will hold them accountable. And yes, Mike Bickle can be redeemed. He can be forgiven, but he will have to step down because he's not qualified anymore. He's no longer qualified. So that's word. This is not us talking and trying to be so critical and judgmental. It is the word. And we encourage you all to please Make sure that you read your word. You see, on this channel, we're going to always direct you to your word and God. Not us. Not man. Your word and the most high God. Because his children who have the set apart spirit, who have the Holy Spirit, they will be able to see if something is sent from God or not. If you have the spirit in you, the spirit will guide you. Not man. That's it for me, Papa C. Mama, you were on fire. I think the microphone is about to melt. So our audience, <laughs> our C. viewers, you were on fire, Mama. Papa C. But this is something that our viewers <laughs> needed to hear because this is something that we see, Mama. People say, <laughs> you're supposed to forgive him. He can be forgiven. He confessed. Mm -hmm. We agree with all of that, Mama. Mm -hmm. We understand man is fallible. Yes. Man will sin. Man is a sinful creature. But yes. according to the scriptures, Mama, Mike Bickle is unqualified now to be a leader. And he needs to just step down and leave no room for he may come back or however he wants to put it. He's disqualified now. Step down and admit publicly to the to the young woman to the Jane Doe because he's being ambiguous with his words with his statements if you're going to confess confess wholeheartedly what you did confess to the person the scriptures tell us to confess our sins to one another meaning especially the one that you hurt that you brought harm to exactly and don't just wait to a, another story come out or information come out for you to feel that you have to confess Confession is, I must say the whole thing because that's what repentance is. Repentance is not, I'm going to drip feed anything. It's I'm going to repent about everything. That's true repentance. True repentance is not, I'm going to choose what I want to repent about. Repenting and turning your heart to God is I'm going to repent about all of my sins. That's true. Mama. Tell the truth. Let's not wait another 20 years to say, oh, because it's public again. Now I can tell you in public that this has happened. Mm -hmm. Say it right now. Because at the end of the article, mama, he admits that he's at peace with whatever God does with him or whatever he wants. So if he's at peace with however the situation plays out, he just needs to admit everything and deal with it. However, the chips fall. I agree with you, Papa C. I truly agree. And Papa C, I'm going to end with the scripture because we mentioned this, but I, I like to quote scripture to make sure that people know this is not coming from us just talking. It says in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14 through 15, it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. That's the word, Mama. Mama, we want to hear from our audience what they think about this. Do they believe Mike Bickle's confession? Is he sincere? Does Mike Bickle need to step down? Is Mike Bickle qualified to be a leader in the church once again? Should everyone just forgive and forget? We would love to hear from the audience. Please drop your comments 
below and share your thoughts about this situation. We will talk to you on the next video. Bye-bye. Later.